My name is Meredith Chilton, and I'm an independent ceramic historian. But for 20 years, I was the curator at the Gardner Museum, and it was a huge privilege for me to work with such an outstanding collection of this wonderful small museum. We're going to be looking at a small bowl that was one of the very last things that George and Helen Gardner purchased before the museum opened. In fact, I can remember when it arrived. It was two or three days before we opened, and we unpacked it, oohed and aahed over it, and then immediately put it out on display. And it sat on the shelves for many years, and every time I walked past it, I would look at it and think to myself, these scenes remind me somewhat of Canada. I wonder where they could have come from. Well, the bowl itself was made at the Mice and Porcelain factory. This was the first factory in Europe to make hard paste porcelain. It was established in 1710 by the elector Augustus the Strong, who was crazy for porcelain. And it made porcelain mainly for him, but also for export all through Europe. The artists who worked there were a group of men who had been gathered from many places. The chief artist had come to the, uh, to the porcelain factory in 1720 from Vienna. His name was Johann Gregor Hörold, and he was the man who established the Meissen style at the factory. This style was placing beautifully uh, painted miniature paintings within decorative ornamental cartouches or frames. Usually, they were chinoiseries in the early period or landscapes, but occasionally they would also have other subjects, and this is the case here. But you can see one of these cartouches beautifully decorated with red and with little pockets of a very special color, a purple, which is called Burtger Luster, which helps to identify early pieces of porcelain. And this particular bowl was made between about 1724 and 1725. I looked everywhere for the sources of this porcelain bowl. Every time I was in Europe, perhaps I was in France or Germany, at any library, I thought to myself, I'll have a jolly good look and see whether I can find an engraving that just might correspond to this bowl. I remember I looked in Nuremberg, in Berlin, uh, I looked in Vienna as well, I looked in the Meissen archives, I could not find anything. But then one day, 10 years later, after lots of fruitless searching, and believe me, this is not the only thing I was doing in 10 years, <laughs> um, but I just happened to be in our own Robarts Library here at the University of Toronto in their rare book room. And I was looking at a wonderful book um, by Jan Allard. It was um, a book of the uh, cities and places of the world. And it also had figures in front showing the costumes of each city and each um, uh, country. And I went from page to page. And then I turned a page. And I found an engraving that said, Hudson's Bay. And I looked at it. And I looked at the engraving and I said, oh my gosh, that's one of the scenes on our bowl. And then I turned the page again and there was a scene that said, New Amsterdam. And there was the other scene on the bowl. And I'm afraid I made a very loud noise in the library and I was told to remove myself. <laughs> but it was an incredibly exciting moment because we had found, I'd found the sources of engravings for this bowl. This book of costumes and places was produced in several different editions. And in a later edition, the scene that had been headed New Amsterdam, in fact, has a cartouche that says Canada. And so in honor of this, we named this bowl the Canada Bowl. It has the earliest scenes on porcelain of Canada, and as such as a great national treasure. Not only do we find scenes on this bowl, two scenes of this bowl of Canada, but also there's a wonderful scene in the inside, which is in fact a scene, an imaginary scene of China, which we call a chinoiserie. It's not a real Chinese scene, it's what the Europeans thought China might look like. It's curious, I think, that you see the mixture of chinoiserie and Canada on this bowl, and you think, why on earth would they do this? I think it's simply because the artists at the factory really had no idea of geography. And so to them, China or Canada were both so far distant that they had no idea whether they were close or far or related or not related. So it was perfectly normal for them to mix this type of ornament. 
And in fact, chinoiserie, this vision of the Orient, was one of the most popular styles of decoration on Meissen. And it's quite clear when you look at the bowl that whoever painted the inside of the bowl did not paint the outside. So we have two hands. This may be the hand of Johann Gregor Hurlt, the great artistic director at Meissen, who came from Vienna in 1720 and established the factory style of the manufactory. I like to think it is. The depth and quality of the painting, the faces, the way in which the sky is painted all indicates his hand. How I could wish for a signature, but alas, there are very, very few of these. This bowl was used as part of a tea service. That again, I think, gives a vision of the East Asia because of course tea came from China at this time and it would have been delicately drunk in little porcelain cups. And then the leftover tea leaves from the cups or from the teapot would have been dumped into this bowl or the bowl could have been used to rinse the tea bowls in between servings. So I would like you to imagine a whole tea service. Very few pieces of it survive. This is the largest piece, and there are a few other tea bowls and saucers. But for us to have this marvelous bowl, the Canada Bowl, in a Canadian museum, I think is of particular importance. It is a great national treasure.